Hi, in this video we'll be setting up authentication portal for Caddy server with local authentication uh, backend. So we'll start by looking at the Caddy file uh, here that I constructed. Uh, the, this format is Caddy file format, but there is also a JSON format for, for Caddy. So when you see those curly brackets, don't assume that's JSON. Just know that's Caddy. That's how it looks like. And so one of those important things is for you to being able to name things. Um, so initially, so I call this first um, first snippet that I highlighted from line number one to line number five as a as a preamble. Um, what we do here is we specify the keywords that would indicate to Caddy to to change its default configuration. For example, the default port, HTTP port for Caddy is 80. Um, I want to run it on 8080. If it's HTTPS, I want to run it on 8443. And the debug keyword <coughs> indicates that I want to enable debugging. Now, what we have here is a config whereby, uh, whereby we indicate the FQDNs, IP addresses of the things that we want to listen for. So when the request comes to Caddy, um, Caddy would analyze the the host that's specified, and then based on that, the Caddy would route you to a particular to a particular um, <clears throat> to a particular handler. So in here. I specify so if uh, a request came to localhost or it came to 127.001 or to a specific IP, they would all uh, they will all be handled using the config, the enclosed config. Now, <clears throat> why why I'm talking about this is because ordinarily you can have you could remove this specific IP address. And then, if you leave localhost and want the the IP address of a local host, then Caddy will automatically generate uh, a certificate for you, like a build-in that will generate it will it will generate it. Uh, but I need that because um, because I actually maintain my own certificate authority and uh, those key files that you see here. Um, where it's a, it's a private key and the cert for, for the server, uh, they are required here for, uh, for me to be able to browse to the server over, the, over this IP, the highlighted IP address. So you could, in, in your set, set up, if you're just using localhost and localhost IP, you can just remove line number eight. You don't need it. So now, next thing it, it, to understand is keyword, so keywords in in caddy in caddy keywords matter so route is a keyword route keyword indicates it's a route handler so there is something called app hand uh, app um app definition let's put it this way an app definition is something that's enclosed in the curly brackets like here uh, and when you have a route keyword, it's a route handler. And route handler, um, the what follows is a pattern to match a specific route. So, in this setup, if someone would to browse to the server, um, and will go 127.001 slash auth, they would end up in this in this particular route handler, this one. The other route handlers will not apply. Uh, will not apply because that's not the match. And if you have two patterns that are matching, uh, two patterns that are matching, then the first one mentioned in the config will be the one handling it. So we have a route. We have a route handler for auth path. So anything auth, we have a route handler for app path, and when then we have a route handler for API path. Finally, we have an API handler for the version, 
and then we have an API, uh, and then we have a route handler for anything favicon to say that's for like, and, and we'll respond to 404. Finally, we have a route handler that's a default route handler. It doesn't have, after the keyword route, it doesn't have anything. So it will match if the all these other route handlers did not match it, this route handler will match it. And what this does, so remember how I said this is a route handler uh, and red ear, that's also a keyword. So keyword that indicates um, keyword that indicates uh, a red ear plugin. And so when you need to look something up, you would go to the on the internet and we we'll type in caddy file red ear plugin and you will have an explanation about what it does. So in short, the reader plugin redirects that serves a redirect to your browser to say, hey, go to um, go to this path HTTPS host port. This is called a, I think, placeholder. Uh, and the idea is it will take the host, the host and port from your original request. We'll put it in here, and then it will say go to auth login redirect the user to auth logging, uh, logging with the st status code 302. And so the idea would be if none of that matched, a user will go from here to the, uh, the route that's a route handler for auth. All right, so let's expand the route handler for auth for uh, for authentication and see what's going on so once again everything is a keyword right auth p is a keyword for the plugin it's it tells caddy i i mention auth p uh and if i mention auth p it means uh work with authentication portal plugin and whatever follows within those brackets right here that would be uh, that would be the configuration for the plugin. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably know about um, Caddy Auth Portal repository and the documentation website, so you could get a lot of useful information. But here, I would um, I would explain the basics. So let's go line number eleven. Crypto default token. So by so the way authentication portal works is that you would go um, you would go to uh, to authentication portal. So let's browse here, uh, and it's not working. Why is that? Because we need to start the server. So we're starting the server, and then we go to the login portal. We'll provide uh, credentials. So let's look up uh, what that password is. Um, so web admin is a default um, default administ like a default administrator um, credential for the local database. We'll talk about this later. But for now, we'll we'll log in. We'll provide a password. We'll authenticate, and we'll get us to the to the portal. So. When we go and we'll inspect the page, we'll go to, I want to go to, all right, let's go here. Let's go to application and then within application, we'll go to cookies. And then two cookies that's, that, that are here is this access token, which is JWT token that you see right below. And authentication session ID. So the one that's that that kind of matters is authentication token. This one. Um, let's go and see what. So remember the name access token, right? And so the access token has a life um, has has a lifespan, and the lifespan we configure right in here we'll say that the lifespan of this token is 3,600 seconds. Next thing is we'll configure a key. 
uh, to sign and to sign the token and verify the token. In this particular case, I'm using a shared key, meaning the same string that's used to uh, encrypt. Uh, sorry, um, to sign the token will be um, uh, will be used to verify that that signature. Uh, there are ways in the portal how you can specify private and public keys, etc. But but for now it's super simple basic setup you will specify the key uh, and that would so that token that you saw previously would be signed using this passphrase uh, and then the time the token will be available uh, will be um, will be uh, 3600 uh, 3600 seconds for an hour now the next thing what I do is I specify the, that I want to use local um, local database for authentication. So in here what I did is I have this path home uh, green pal, so it's in my local folder. I specify that there's a pointer to some JSON file. I will not have it on my on my system, so right now I do have it. So I will shut down the I will shut down the uh, the server, and just for the sake of the explanation, I would go and I would delete this file. Um, so that that file doesn't exist, and when I will try to cat through it, it there there is none. Right. So one of those features of authentication portal, if there is file is not there, it, the authentication portal will create the file with some default credentials. <clears throat> so what we'll do right now is we'll modify that caddy config I, before the demo. I commented out some settings here. Um, so let's start it again. And we will, so we're starting it again. Everything started. We see, um, we see the, uh, we see the portal. So let me shut it down. Uh, I go to the portal, but this time it drops me back into the sign in. And my password will not work because when you, when, when you, when the auth portal auto generates this file the password file like uh, the credentials database for you it will not uh, you need to look at the logs so you need to find a line that says something about something about password for um, web admin user so now how do we um, so here you go there is a lot. There will be a record that will say "created default admin user for the database," and there will be username and a secret. That's that's the password that you will use. You can change it later, uh, but for now we'll just copy copy paste it for for our records so we can log in. So we'll use that. Um, we'll use this this password, like that secret, to log in into the server. So let's go. Um, we'll say web admin, logging, and then we'll provide this password. Once we're connected, okay, we're in. So what we see, we see my website, my identity, portal, portal settings, and that's it. Those are three links available to us. So how do they appear on the in the portal? Well, let's um, let's take a look. We'll go back to our config and we will see that there are some, there are links called UI links. Um, they're defined like that. Uh, the my website, that's a, the the structure there is you first provide what like the name of the link that everyone would see. Next thing you will provide the path that you will actually browse to, and after that you can provide an icon. And this is, uh, I think, line awesome icons. So you can provide an icon, and then it will like the the system will draw the icon for you. So when we go to the screen, you will see the the star icon, the profile icon, and then some gear icon. 
So that's how they, they pop up. Now some some of those some of those settings they come from UI links. But there is also another way to get the link to a user. It's called transform. So user transforms, you could read about them and they're defined here. So if a user was able to log in via local backend, you see this local backend. We have a rule that if we match the origin, so that, that token that will be issued to the user, the token that will that is issued to us. So let's go see that. So the this my identity, the who am I endpoint, allows you to allows you to uh, to see the token that was issued to you. So we'll click on my identity and you will see that there is a token that was issued to me. First, the token has an address encoded. So that would be the address that I came through. And the reason that that's, that's address is because I'm coming in through a proxy uh, that sits on my VM. And therefore, that's the default proxy address. So the issuer, as you can see, the issuer for my um, for my uh, for my token is that local host. And then you see how it says origin and realm. Realm is authentication realm. So when a, a user transform can match on any of the fields that you see here, and then you can act on them. So in this particular case, we will match on ma uh, uh, origin local. And then if someone is matched on origin local, then we'll add a role to that uh, to that identity auth p user. This is a key here. So let's let's go let's go and look. So the roles by default, this web admin user gets a single role auth p admin, and then auth p user, the second role was actually added by the user transform that we just looked at. Same idea how you can add a role. You can say once once a role added, so then we have a second transform that says if someone is uh, came from from origin local and has a role of P user, then we'll add the portal settings link uh, to uh, to their portal. So that's what happens here that's how the portal settings uh, link arrived here so we can click and that would bring us to the um, settings management here you can add ssh keys gpg keys api keys mfa you can change your password here um, and then you can connect your um, your public web service accounts like google facebook etc so let's continue our exploration of the um, of the config. So remember, when you create, when you define a local backend, if that file does not exist, you don't you don't have to do anything to create it. It will create it for you. You just need to know to pick up the password and change the password. So how about we go in and we'll change the password. We'll go we'll 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 go in in into the portal. And we'll click password. We'll change the password to something something else. Let's say we'll remove dashes from um, from the password. And that will be our new password. So we change password. All right. So log out. So let's log out. Provide web admin. I'm once again. I'm putting the new password. I'm back in. That's that's about it. So now remember how we spoke about. Remember how we spoke about um, <clears throat> lifetime of a token, the um, the one that's listed here, default token lifetime, 3,600 seconds. So let's take a look at let's take a look at um, in here where you have a field called expires, and you can see that this expires. This was issued. At 10:21, and it will expire at 11:20:21. 20, so that's your that's your hour. That's the lifetime of that uh, of that ticket. 
going back to the portal. So that's the entire that's the entire config. So now what happens? So let's let's discuss a little bit this this file. So now that we have the server running, we'll shut it down and then we'll take a look at the at the file itself, right? So that's a JSON file. So what it created for you, it created a, a, a local database. Local database has a policy related to passwords. So you can you can create your local database that requires certain certain characters. It requires like uppercase character, lowercase character, the minimal length, the maximum length, uh, and how many versions of passwords to keep. Uh, then we have uh, then we have the user, user logging, um, logging, um, user, u username, right, um, policy, which is like we cannot have a username that consists only of two, uh, two characters, minimum of three, uh, etc. And then we have the snippet users. So here is our web admin user. And here's an email address associated email addresses associated with the uh, with it. So the way you do uh, the way you manage this database is you basically copy stuff, right? So you will take the um, the um, the entry for web admin. You will copy and you will change uh, username to some other username, and then you will. Um, you will change a password to um, to whatever you want it to be. So, for example, um, this the initial. Remember how I changed the password right now? So you, we actually keep number of versions uh, of the password. So as you can see, this one is currently active, and this one is disabled. Um, so the idea is, if you want to change the password. What you need to do is you need to use bcrypt, uh, bcrypt tools. Check out the um, local uh, local database management uh, in the documentation, and it shows you like an example how you can set a new password. But the idea is you can copy the entry for one user to another, amend it, and then you will restart. Uh, you will restart uh, the server, and you will have new users. That's 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 the gist, right? So at this point we are finished with um, so let's let's do re, let's relogging. All right, so we are where we want to be right now. Uh, so we go to the my website, right? So what is that my, my website? As you can see, that's that's based on our link, and that is the app route. So let's take a look. So here is my website. It's an app. And remember how I said that route handlers matching the app. Here is what will here is what will will happen here. So let's talk about let's talk about what you see here. So route route handler for the app star right has a number of plugins. Remember the keywords. So the plugin uh, the keyword authorize it instructs to use the caddy uh, caddy authorized plugin previously it was called caddy jwt uh, jwt plugin but i renamed it because it's more than jwt at the moment and it's actually easier to read so any the, your first mention in the config your first mention of authorized plugin you need to have a primary instance. So in this particular case, we have we mentioned authorize twice. Once in the route handler for app, another one is for route handler for the API. You see how in here there is not not much config. Why is that? Is because by so because by default if a plugin if if a plugin authorized plugin is not primary meaning there is no primary yes set on it then it will inherit settings from the primary instance of the plugin um, so whatever configuration is here 
assume that configuration is is over here by design so what we are saying what 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 is that we are saying here we configure authorized plugin to do the following will if someone comes in to route app the authorized plugin will be the first to handle handle that request and then if the token is not the the authentication token is is not being found what will happen is that the plugin authorized plugin will redirect the user to the authentication url in this particular case slash auth so it will go back to the authentication plugin to perform the authentication if all right so then there is allow roles <clears throat> so each each token that is issued my identity has a number of roles associated with it so what this configuration what this configuration does it looks at it and says all right i will only allow auth p admin and auth p user to uh to path through me so what do i mean by that authorized plugin is not is not a, a plugin that serves something to the user it just intercepts a request and it passes the request down if it's okay and if and if it redirects the user if it's not right so that's that's kind of the deal here um and so if authorized plugin says that the request that that you, a user has a valid token and the uh, user has any of these two roles then there then the user will be able to go down to the file server plugin and we'll go through that uh, next but that's the, that that's the gist now this crypto verify crypto key verify remember that token needs to be token assigned and it, its signature needs to be verified so we'll we'll see that you you will have a string here and the string matches the one in line number 12 so these these strings in line number 12 and line number 37 they match because remember we're using pre-shared keys and so if it was if the token came in and this password this passphrase is unable to verify um, the signature on the token that's invalid the user will not pass and then what what will happen if a token is not valid you get redirected to authentication so now assume that we passed through that so we clicked we clicked um, we clicked my website and so we landed on a web page with the word caddy on it so how did we arrive there let's um let's discuss that so first of all you see how there is this uri plugin a uri plugin what it does uh, it basically strips it modifies the path of the request and in this particular case if uh, a path so we we know that the request came it's a route handler for apps something something so this URI strip prefix when we remove app from here will basically will be our root right and why are we doing that so let's 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 see uh, we'll shut down the server and then we'll go and we'll remove and we'll remove that your right strip from there so we'll comment it comment comment with pound so we commented this out we we'll started the web server I'm still on the web, on that web page and then when I click enter here it will fail it will say page cannot be found you got 404 all right so let's take a look look at the logs so what does the log say oh the request came and the file server which originally serves files from varli gatekeeper because the prefix of the request was app slash app gatekeeper doesn't have slash app in its path what does it has what does it have 
it has index.html in its root. And that index.html contains that, that HTML page. So that's what we why we need to remove the the prefix app so that the when the request comes to the file server, so that the request comes from the file server, it will not try to go to varlib gatekeeper app, but rather it will stay in there and because it's a root directory and index.html is there, we'll be able to see index.html. That's that's kind of a gist. So we'll go back and we'll uncomment that. We're in. We'll refresh and we're back. We're back online. So that's the importance of the URI prefix stripping. Stripping. Um, it it applies to many. Um, it applies in many contexts. Like, uh, for example, uh, like a lot of, if you proxy something, you might actually uh, need to strip uh, the prefix. So that's so one one mention. So Autorize, URI, and File Server, those are all plugins. There is this term called terminal plugin. Terminal meaning it terminates a flow. So let's let's... Let's talk about this a little bit because um, it's important. So some plugins, let's say, will have a version. So you see this version uh, route handler. So we'll let's go to slash slash version. That that route handler that just handle it returned to us 101, right? Uh, 100. The plugin that's responsible for handling that that route, the first one, is called a respond plugin. A respond plugin is a terminal plugin. What happens there is that a respond plugin will write a header. Uh, it will write a header and a response body, and will not be able to, and and after that any plugin after that will not be able to change neither the body of the message nor the header of the message that's returned to a user. That's what's called terminal. Uh, that's the key. Now, in this particular case, there is no authorized plugin, so this is unauthorized, uh, unauthenticated route handler, meaning will not verify anything. So let's, but the API, API route handler is, uses the, secondary instance meaning that something that inherits from the primary for the route api so let's go to the api it's also uses by the way a respond plugin right but here what happens is i need to authenticate again okay so i am now back so i go to the app so let me go to the api and then, oh, I got to the API. So that's kind of like, that's 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 uh, that's the simplicity, so to speak, right? Uh, in here, the respond plugin was able to, so the authorized, uh, authorized plugin inherited from the primary instance over here. And that's why, that's how I'm able to, uh, to browse through. So that's uh, that's the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.